Hello YouTubers, Tros here again. And uh, today I'm going to have a, a three part video. The, over the my time playing Minecraft I made three different versions of this project, or types of this project. And that's because I love the clock. Here I have a digital clock. This is actually the first digital clock I've made in creative mode. Uh, besides being a digital clock, it has a sun position indicator. You can see, according to the top clock here, that the sun is beginning to set, and you can see that's the case. Uh, well, actually, when I first built this clock, yeah, I believe it was a few months after 1.7 came out, so the, the sun didn't set in that direction. It's actually set behind the clock, I, I believe, or either right, <laughs> rows are set behind or in front of the clock in a uh, uh, this direction uh, rather than as it does now going uh, that way but uh, you can see it, uh, it just flipped over to 528 we got the uh, little colon blinking there and uh, I got a little thing of redstone repeaters that fills up and then disappears I'll uh, briefly describe how this works but uh, the, the main timer here is this set of repeaters uh, it's enough repeaters for a 30 second delay, so it takes 30 seconds for them all to come on. And it takes then a, another 30 seconds for them all to turn off. And uh, that signals the uh, minute indicator to uh, switch here. And then uh, after this gets up to uh, 9, the next time uh, the minute indicator flips. And you can see it just flipped to 9. The next time it flips, the minute and the uh, 10, tens of minute flips. And you can see the uh, little sun indicator is moved again. Uh, and then uh, when the 10 minutes gets up to 5, the next time uh, that it's signaled to change, it flips to 0, which then increments the hour indicator. Um, it looks like there's a lot of stuff here and there really is. This is a big, big design. Uh, very, not as I would build it today. Uh, but this is my first step before I even looked at other people's YouTube videos uh, of how they would do it and uh, this is what I came up with. Um, I see this is an unusual design because, oh, here we go, we flipped over to 30. Uh, it's an unusual design because it uses unary counters and then it uses uh, unary two seven segment display converters. Uh, if you don't know what that is, oh, we got a little glitch here on this. This happened before, but that one uh, piston gets stuck. Not sure why that is. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this is a seven segment display. It's called that because there's seven parts to it. One, two, three, four, five six and seven and each of those parts can be on or off. It's you know just like your digital clock. Uh you know it's either LED or or well LED or L C D uh but they basically there's seven parts and you have to somehow convert the number as the clock's computer because digital clocks are run by a small computer. Uh as the clock's computer knows it you have to convert it into uh seven separate signals to light up the display. Uh, so how this clock works is uh, there's basically a counter right here. You can see there's one block down here and the rest of the up are up. If that one block is down is on this first row that means one, the next row is two, three, four, five, all the way up to nine. This is the ones place of my clock. Only one of them can be on at a time. Each of one of these is a, uh, a toggle flip-flop, basically. And uh, in front of it, uh, a little hard to see, but uh, here, here, and up here vertically makes an AND gate. Uh, so the top here, we can see that there's two of these are lit up or I should say are not lit up, all the rest are. And uh, that is because this is the block that is down. Uh, because this block is down, 
uh, the row, its torch is off, and the next torch is off. So that when the 30 second signal, or minute signal, comes around and goes from off to on right here, there's an edge detector there, it turns on this torch which makes all these blink momentarily, uh, which causes, because the end gate, only these two and none of the others, like you just saw. And that causes both of these, the, the block was over here, or I should say this block was down and this block was up, but that signal caused this one to toggle back up and this one to toggle down. And along, uh, so when that happens, the next row over here turns off, which powers power, which turns the next two, basically these two shifted over one spot. Uh, so that the next time this one will go up and this one will come down. Simultaneously, um, it changes uh, output over here. Uh, so this is behind the ones place seven segment display and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. Each one of these rows basically uh, is part of the display. So if you had a one only, only these two would be powered and all the rest would be unpowered. Uh, so this is basically the rightmost and then uh, bottom, middle, top, and the, the leftmost segments. So basically down here, uh, the row corresponding to the current number gets unpowered, which means its torches turn on, and you can see I uh, use a repeater and a torch so that the torch shuts off, but the signal is propagated down to, or torch comes on, oh, we just flipped over, so you can see the next row, this row went out and these torches came on, uh, so you can see that the topmost um, if it was a <laughs> right top is on, all three in the middle, and the bottom on the left is on, uh, making a five. Actually, I had that hit the left and right reversed uh, uh, about which was the top and bottom, but. Yeah, so these torches power the lines that correspond to that number, or the shape of that number. And then this will go to 6. Oh, we already went to 6 while I was flying over there. Look at that. Yep, it's now a 6. So basically this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Seven, eight, nine. Actually, that was zero. The first one. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um. Well, what happens when we get to nine? Well, um, the nine, besides turning off its own torch, has to go and turn off the torch for one. Plus, it sends a signal up here. This signal uh, comes from the same edge trigger. Uh, so this was the ones place. This is the tens place. You can see it's a lot simpler because, as you all know, uh, the tens place of a clock only shows the numbers 0 through 6. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And uh, using this AND gate, this torch will turn off when 9 is lit up. So when 9 is lit up and then we get the next minute signal, uh, basically the same thing happens here. Uh, we have another row of uh, toggles. And then we have another uh, unary to 7 segment display converter. And all these signals then come over here and it's tricky but they're routed down to the tens place from the top. Uh, next we have this 
compact uh, cycler that cycles once a second but controls the flashing of the colon. And then we have the hour. Now the hour, this is a 20 or 12 hour clock, not a 24 hour clock. So the hour just needs to toggle uh, from 1 to 12, which is 12 positions. And that is done on this floor, below the 1's floor. And uh, it's kind of flipped around because the digits are on this side, so it made more sense to make the 7-segment uh, converter on this side, so we have all the uh, toggles on this side. And uh, it's actually a little hard to notice, but when the 5-digit sends a signal this way, it's, it's kind of an invert signal, it's it's off when it's about to change. Well, this part is, and then it's converted or inverted here so that this is on when it needs to change. And that cycles down on the outside just past the ones digit and down here um, and this is comes from the uh, ones place, I believe, uh, or not the ones place, but the minute timer, and they're anded together somewhere. Basically, this flashes whenever the hour needs to change. Actually, yeah, actually, I don't think they're ended with the uh, that's. There's advanced buttons, uh, so if this shows the wrong hour, you can uh, increment it. I think it just whenever the 5 flips to a 0, this also flashes, making the hour toggle 1. Uh, so you can see we got zero, oh, 1, because there's no 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's the current display. 6 is going to be the display next. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is actually not a seven segment display at this point. This is a nine segment display. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. All right, it's an eight segment display. Uh, that's because the last one is a one. Uh, so this controls both the upper and lower segment in case if the one is turned on. And you can see it's only turned on for the last three, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, so while it's technically nine segments, the the last two are always used together. So if, for efficiency's sake, there's only one line for them. And these are done from below and uh, piped up underneath to the last two digits. Uh, so there's some controls here to turn on and off the clock. And basically this just uh, freezes the value of this uh, outer timer so it doesn't change anymore and then we got some increment the ones, increment the hour, increment the tens and uh, there's an extra copy of all these controls if you want to turn this into a building you just build a wall along here uh, break down uh, let's grab one of these blocks And you got the on off switch, uh, increment the hour, increment the 10 minute, increment the ones. Oop. Oh, uh, when the hour goes off, we got a little chime here. This was, uh, I enjoyed building this. This is basically you can make any tune you want, probably up to 100 notes long. And you got all the notes right here from uh, low to high for a particular instrument. Like right now, uh, we got the dirt instrument, which uh, let's clone one of these. You know, the uh, piano sound. Uh, but yeah, each one of these boxes is a, is a different note, the lowest up to the highest. Uh, signal to activate it comes here, and it basically will travel down this way and just like the seven segment displays 
uh, right now it's set to play a scale, but you basically just put a torch wherever you uh, want a note. You can do chords, uh, but the way you'd have to do that is you'd have to put a... If you want to do a chord on this note, uh, if there are lower notes, you'd have to put them ahead. And if there are higher notes on this side, you'd also have to put them ahead with the uh, respective delay. You can see all these in the center here are on a, a two delay, two tick delay between the notes. Uh, there is one little thing because of the, the length of the lines up here. You need a repeater here, so uh, since this is an extra tick, the one repeater here is only on a one tick delay, uh, where the rest are on the two. If you wanted these two to be a one, you would then just remove this repeater and just replace it with a normal piece of redstone to keep the, because these redstone repeaters up here would add that one tick delay. Uh, uh, but this basically plays a scale right now. I can uh, show you how that would work. Uh, but basically, you can you know just extend these back every 15, putting a repeater, and uh, you know make the song as long as you want. And you can just stand right here and hear all of it as long as it's within like 100, 150 notes, so that uh, the whole thing stays inside the uh, run renderable, runnable area. I'll just uh, put a torch down here and you'll hear the uh, play a scale. Uh, so that's how that works. Uh, for the yeah, so whenever the hour flips, this also activates. Uh, the other part is this uh, sun position timer, and that's on a separate circuit all by itself. And uh, that's this circuit here. Uh, again, uh, there was a little adjustment button down here for it. Uh, but there's basically a 100 second timer. Uh, because the, the Minecraft day is 20 minutes. And uh, if you divide that into 12 hours, this is 12 spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's one behind here. 7, 8, 9. And then there's 3 at the bottom. It works just like uh, you can see the uh, watch in uh, my uh, little bar here, or in my hand now. Uh, so, yeah, this represents the ground, and the sun is right overhead as it indicates. And there's also, you can see that I got a little white snow or white wool block uh, that indicates the moon. Uh, so, basically, every hundred seconds. Uh, so this timer up here is actually 50 seconds. I, again, I do, it all has to turn on and then all has to turn off. Uh, and so that we, the timer basically is used twice per loop. And then we got a edge detector right around here. And then this torch in, starts the whole flipping process. And the way this works, uh, it's actually a little bit complex. But uh, because of the way it's laid out, there is no blocks in any of the corners where there, there's pistons. So there's actually a double piston here to start the whole process off. And uh, we got a little ABBA switch here so that this double piston uh, pushes up twice. And because of that, uh, a block gets pushed here. So then this piston can just push one over and then there'll be a block over here so that that piston can just push one down and then this piston can just push one over. But then that puts this last block on top of this piston and there's a gap right here. So at the very end we indicate, uh, actuate this lower piston again which pushes up this piston and the block and then this piston can come back down. Uh, so that that's the whole process, and this kind of leaf block here, uh, besides looking nice, kind of hides that missing spot while the rest are going around. Let's see if it moved over, and yes, the sun is starting its way down. Uh, so this is that covers about everything with this clock. Uh, this was my first clock.
as I said, it, it is really it's really big. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, there's much simpler designs, and I came to find that out after I built this clock and looked at what other people did. Uh, so I'll be showing you uh, one of those designs uh, probably in three seconds. I'll see you in the next part. Okay, here we are. Uh, this was the second clock I've ever made. This one, uh, this one is uh, made on a multiplayer server, and um, it was uh, <laughs> some ways harder to make and in other ways easier. Um, I had to contend with some other people's uh, instructions, and uh, kind of my original vision was a little changed. Uh, because of the way other people built stuff, uh, but I kind of stripped away some of that so you can see all of it here. Uh, the minecart here does nothing, it's just for decoration, although I was going to attempt to use it uh, to attempt to solve the freezing uh, redstone problem. Uh, repeaters, if you leave the area, uh, can, and actually you still sometimes do get stuck in an on position. Uh, actually, the got a con same kind of uh, sun indicator, although I, I haven't set it up and it is probably frozen. Uh, uh, probably just have to break and replace the, uh, the frozen uh, repeater to get it to work. But uh, here I used uh, piston sticking out instead of coming in from the side and uh, there's just strips of uh, glowstone to to light it up uh, so it works pretty good like that uh, again you can see I have some buttons to adjust the uh, hours and minutes and this time in addition to the uh, day night indicator um, I also added a, a moon indicator and the uh, moon indicator didn't well didn't work because the moon never changed phase when I put it in but when I put it in uh, which is actually after I finished uh, most of the clock uh, is when they first announced that the moon phases were gonna change uh, uh, but when they finally happened the uh, environment also changed because this used to not be a snowy biome uh, but after that update, I forget which update it was, may, may, uh, I think it was 1.9 if I had to guess, uh, that changed the environment around here. Uh, but this clock whoop, works completely differently, almost completely differently. Uh, we still have the timer of 30 seconds, although uh, I, instead of having it go around the building completely, I have it uh, go into and out of the wall here, uh, but it basically that kind of acts like seconds for you. Uh, as it's filling up, it's uh, zero to thirty seconds, and then as it disappears, it's thirty to sixty seconds. But the rest of the inside is all handled with piston loops. Uh, the piston loops basically accomplish two things at once. They they keep track of what the current number is and also do the encoding of uh, the seven segment display. So it's a kind of two for one. And uh, this is very cramped. Uh, this is basically built in a, you know, inside a mountain and as you can kind of see the other side of the mountain is right on the other side of this wall. Uh, so these are basically the, the top of Piston loop is piston loop for the ones digit, and uh, you can kind of see they just uh, spun it. It kind of goes around in, in this way, and uh, we got some redstone here, and uh, it applies power, and the power does not go through the glass, but it does go through the wood blocks. So you can see this should now say one, I believe, unless I have it completely backwards. Actually, I think I do have that completely backwards because 
where there's glass is actually where we have the piston sticking out uh, because everything gets inverted. Um, so yeah, actually, uh, you'll see this is actually eight segments. Uh, it's a seven segment display, and then we have a, a little indicator when we flip it to zero. So that would trigger the tens, please. And then uh, tens place is similar, except it's not. <laughs> so while this loop has the digits uh, zero through nine, well, it looks like this did break at one point. Uh, this should not be pushed down. It should be a part of the uh, number loop. Well, the tens digit only has the numbers zero through six, but you can't make a a uh, or not zero through five, I should say. But you can't make a full piston loop out of that and get stuff in the middle. So this is actually a, a twelve position piston loop that has uh, the numbers zero through five twice. Um, Again, it has an extra indicating when zero has uh, been reached. Actually, it has that twice. And that flips on the hour. So the hour uh, seam size loop, but it actually has 12 different digits. And they control the last two uh, sets of pistons. And uh, that's this clock, and uh, have little pistons here for the uh, colons. And then up in this room here, we have the uh, sundial and moon position indicator. So uh, again, you can see how these uh, frozen uh, just takes. If you knock out the one behind it, it turns it on, and just got to put that back. And then we'd have to press this button to adjust. Uh, but basically, this is the sundial, kind of same circuit. The one difference is, well, I have all these snow blocks back here. Why is that? Well, I have that's the sun, so the moon should be. Yeah, it's right here. And I have the moon done with a piece of glass letting you see the snow block. And why that is, is because um, the moon phase, which is over here, um, I need to adjust. Basically, the moon has eight phases. And uh, so I have basically a, a loop of eight blocks. Uh, it really should be four black blocks and uh, four rows of black blocks. There's two here and two on the other side, and four rows of white blocks. Uh, but in order to make it look kind of right as a real moon would be with crescents, uh, the spots where the black blocks and would end, I actually have a white block on the top and bottom, and that's actually on both sides. So that gives you a crescent coming and going. But basically, over here at the uh, moon position, or sun moon position indicator, there's a, a torch here. And the uh, glowstone and the uh, moon, which is glass, both don't conduct power. So they cause signals to come over here and trigger the moon position to shift uh, to rotate these blocks around once. So basically these pistons will push and there's a set uh, over here which you can just see. So these will push these four blocks over. Right now there's a space in front of these pistons and that whole set will push the currently facing blocks over to fill in this space and then this set of pistons will push back and that set of pistons will push forward, causing basically the whole section here to rotate around one block. And uh, 
that causes that will cause this to turn into just a thin crescent from its current position and, and these spots will here will be black and basically this will give you all the different phases right now this is like half full then you know thin crescent then it will be completely black and then we'll get a crescent on the other side then half full then three you know three quarters and completely full and then three quarters the other way so you basically go through a cycle of eight different positions and uh, it'll basically show all the different moon phases so that's uh, this clock and it, it, it works it's still pretty big but it's a, it's a lot more efficient you can see it the you know it doesn't go below the the pistons or the, not the, the repeaters here um, this line of glowstone is at the ceiling of the whole rotator piston section you can see this section oh, you can see this just shifted one because the uh, sun moved out of the way and uh, it's not that thick you can see the mid mountain here is you know just a few blocks thick maybe 15 or 20 at most you know 15 at the top 20 down at the bottom so it's a pretty efficient design but um, it does take up a lot of room I mean we have a whole city here and you couldn't put the clock in any one of these buildings uh, so kind of just recently came up with a uh, more efficient design that tells the time and fits in a building and I'll show you that next see you in a few seconds okay here we are in my uh, giant pumpkin farm world and uh, you may have noticed in one of my earlier videos uh, but I have a construction over here at the end of the uh, pumpkin farm and this is a clock it's actually an analog clock and it's actually a decent size uh, you can ignore this little uh, circuit down here this was uh, just a test circuit for one part of the clock but this is a clock uh, you know 12 hour analog clock that's uh, about 20 blocks high and 11 by 11 square footprint uh, which is uh, surprisingly a manageable size you can just hear the tick tock as the uh, minute hand which is indicated by this gold block shifted over by one uh, that indicates five minutes of time has passed in real time uh, the hour hand is indicated here which is right now pointing at four the uh, red marks or red wool are the marks we got twelve one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven uh, this basically is the center of the clock the uh, diamond is the hour hand and it uh, moves just like the sun moved in uh, the sun position indicators on my previous two clocks and uh, we got the minute hand here which kind of moves in a larger circle and two positions at a time around with the black and gray wool blocks as well uh, it actually does move around the circle there is only one um, gold block it doesn't just like slide down on a gray block slide in or some other mechanism like that uh, we got on the front here hour advance and minute advance and uh, basically uh, this section here uh, basically from this point down to about this floor here is a timer actually it's two separate timers and then uh, from the, this point up is the mechanism to control uh, the hands and uh, I'll kind of show you that now um, let's 
so we got uh, well, it's kind of a complicated mechanism to move the hands, but uh, the hour, the hour part, uh, you kind of know from uh, what I showed you before. As I said, it is very similar to the uh, previous uh, sundial, um, but instead of having the double piston at the bottom, I have it here, uh, so it kind of moves at the top and down and then across the bottom and then up and then once more just to fill in the hole. Um, the minute hand um, is kind of activated through here and uh, as I said the minute hand has to move twice so it's activated immediately this is right above the piston uh, so that spot kind of powers the piston and then we got these kind of delay timers here that uh, activate it again after a few seconds this is also uh, kind of makes a tick tock so we have uh, the one block here on top of the sand that uh, activates immediately and then on the second activation it uh, activates this on the glass so we get the uh, tick talk and uh, sound as it moves but basically the piston here activates and pushes wool this way and the whole rest of the minute hand is activated off that piece of wool moving uh, basically to keep these in the right order uh, it's a little bit of a complex process but the whole line shifts over so that this wool block goes over on top of this torch and that lights up this line here which uh, well it does two things there's a little well it touches that torch which um, does happen. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> Alright, so this is a sticky piston. So to keep these all in the right order, the black gets pushed over here and the gray will be next to the sticky piston. This power will turn off, which causes the sticky piston to pull up. So this then pushes back the black block and the gray block will be on top of it and then this pushes down again keeping the black and gray blocks in the right order all that's happening um, there's a power signal that gets sent down here and after appropriate delay the same thing happens here uh, this one is the sticky piston and so the black block is pushed down the gray block is pulled back black block is pushed back up and then the gray block is used to push it down the row and then you can see there's some delay here and the same thing happens over here except now it's pushing up uh, so that happens once and then the this gets activated again so and then it happens a second time so that uh, the gold block is moved twice so it only stops at the position where the gray blocks are um, when it reaches the top we now have to move the hour uh, but we don't know when it reaches the top and because of this design we can't really shoot power through it like I was doing with the uh, sun moon indicator on the previous clock so what we have over here is another loop and this is just a simple loop of uh, glass blocks and a gold block so this is indicates the position of the minute hand and when the minute hand gets right here that means on the front of the face the minute hand has reached the 12 o'clock mark or the 12 mark so we need to increment the hour so then this 
this little edge detector so it only sends one pulse and that's what triggers the hour hand to move so basically we have a repeat of the minute hand inside the clock and it, that kind of makes me think this is actually somewhat like a real clock with all the extra mechanisms in the clock to keep everything synchronized but as I said this top part up here is just the uh, part that controls the hands the part that controls the timing comes from here you got two different torches and you can see this one blinks every so often and this one doesn't um, it's because this uh, clock has two sets of time you can set it to real time or you can set it to minecraft time in real time we use a block delay and since I was here on my giant pumpkin farm I have a dispenser full of pumpkins so every five minutes this will disappear and then uh, the pressure plate triggers another one to be shot out and at the same time it uh, triggers this torch to blink which moves the minute hand I have the kind of same mechanism I do over on my uh, farm where I have a kind of backup timer that if the first block or pumpkin misses it'll fire out another one within well within the amount of time it takes the minecart to travel around although it looks like I may have to adjust that now on 1.4 because it worked at 1.5 where this would blink but uh, no matter the other option is Minecraft time. Minecraft time is tricky. Minecraft time is 20 minutes is a whole day which means 10 minutes is an hour which uh, if you do the math means 5 minutes comes out to between 4.1 and 4.2 seconds. Well you can only do a timer with a simple timer with redstone repeaters to a tenth of a second and I need four and two-thirds of a second uh, because that's the exact amount of time uh, that five minutes would be so I came up I want to fly came up with this design here so there's actually two loops this is one loop as it's going on uh, back to the front here and this is the other loop one of the leftmost loop is 4.1 seconds worth of delay and the rightmost loop here is 4.2 seconds worth of delay so to get 4.166666 which is what I need we do one loop here on the left and then we'll do two loops here on the right uh, as you can see there we have a, a little toggle flip-flop so every other time the root loop on the right is activated it pushes this block which decides we're doing the left loop or the right loop so this outer area here blinks 4.1666 seconds over a long enough span of time and uh, this slightly rearranged is the rest of this floor here the part that isn't occupied by this uh, real-time timer and so you can see here we got that one metal block that gets shifted back and forth and we got the one loop over here and the other loop over here and here's the toggle so that we only move that one back every other there's a change here uh, I got a little block here so we can turn off this timer if it gets annoying or if you need to reset it for whatever reason uh, so I'm gonna flip this and uh, we'll go around the front clock to see how it works the way the minute hand works is it takes just under four seconds uh, so it, it does get a little hairy because the timing is tight uh, but you can see when I flip this it will move this metal block out of the way 
move this metal block over because this row of redstone right here is what triggers the actual minute or five minute hand in this case to advance. So I'm going to flip this now and the clock is going to go crazy. You see just after it finishes moving it's triggered again. And as you can hear, there is an hour chime. Uh, so the same circuit that triggers the hour hand to move also comes down here and triggers these note blocks. And as you can hear, I program the uh, note blocks to play the typical clock hour chime. Uh, I believe it's called the Westminster chime. But you can see the minute hand just finishes its second cycle and then it's triggered again so it's really tight timing I actually had to play with that a lot to get it to work uh, readjusting how it worked hope to get it quicker but I think uh, that maybe I could get one tick out of it but the way I have it arranged without completely rewiring everything this is just about as fast as it will go So that's uh, my Minecraft clocks. As you can see, this one is suitable for putting in a building. You put it in a tower. It's not that wide. It's not that tall. It does work in real time or Minecraft time, and it is readable from a far away. You know, you can still see the uh, you know a good hundred blocks away. You can still see the five minute and hour hand indicators. And while there's no actual hands like a clock would have, it, it's basically you know a readable analog clock for anyone who, who knows how an analog clock works. If you test over here for the audio, you can delete this, but basically using these uh, blocks here, I'm going to turn this into a schematic and uh, probably post it up uh, online somewhere. Turn this off before it gets too annoying. Because it does get very noisy moving all the time. And then we are back to real time. You can uh, use the hour advance buttons and minute advance buttons. Uh, as you can see, because the minute is constantly moving basically in real time, I do disable the minute advance button by uh, having that piston retract that the uh, signal doesn't go through when you do turn it into minute advance mode uh, because if you try to advance it while it's already advancing you know probably screw up all the pistons and something get pushed out of the wrong order but uh, other than that you know it's completely settable uh, you know if you do want to use Minecraft time you basically just get it to say noon um, and then wait for actual noon and flip the switch over to Minecraft time or I should say not actual noon but game noon and switch over to Minecraft time and that would keep it synced up pretty good um, again though this does have the problem as most clocks do that if you're not in the area and it gets unloaded it's not going to be synchronized anymore but there's probably not a Minecraft clock that won't do that unless you somehow have a morning sensor that would somehow reset the time, but uh, that would be a very complex uh, construction. I hope you uh, enjoyed the look at these different clocks, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. So long.